Okay, welcome to this lesson on modeling direct variation and drawing scatter plots and best fitting lines. Putting together a couple of lessons here because these are pretty short and pretty easy to do. So just two objectives, being able to model direct variation and the second one, use a graphing calculator to draw some scatter plots and best fitting lines. So, speaking of that second objective there, you're going to need a graphing calculator for this. I don't want you just watching the video and going, mm, yep, totally got it, and then having to do it for the first time in class um, without having practiced it at home with me in this video. So, if you don't have your own, I will show you, once we get to that objective, how to get it from my website on your computer for free. Okay, so our first objective, you're going to be able to model some direct variation. And I know what you're thinking, what a strange picture this is. So here you got some roller derby chicks, and uh, this one is stretching right here in the foreground, the one with the orangish red hair. And um, her leg is perpendicular to the floor. So the floor and her leg make X and Y axis, and her body would it looks as if it's going through the origin and it's making a straight line. This is a type of line that is showing direct variation. Okay, The simplest kind of line is one that has a slope and goes through the origin, like the two that are in the picture here. Okay, So this just has a simple equation, y equals mx. The slope and the y-intercept is zero, so you don't have to write it down. We have two that are in the picture. We have y equals a half x and y equals negative x. Okay, this is a type of line that shows direct variation. So direct variation as a line is going to be y equals mx. But wait a minute, let me totally change that on you. Okay, so for whatever reason, this book changes the m in direct variation to an a. Okay, so when a line shows direct variation between x and y, we write the equation y equals ax where A is this thing called the constant of variation. Constant of variation kind of sounds like an oxymoron. Two contradictory terms. But it is what is what your x values, your x and y values are changing by, and that amount of change is always the same. It's constant. Okay. So uh, if you see this in words, if you see this in a paragraph, especially in a science class, in a science book, it might say y is said to vary directly with x. y varies directly with x or y is directly proportional to x. That's the wording that you will sometimes see. And of course a is the same thing as slope. When you get into pre-cal and you talk about direct variation again, you'll change the letter to a k. And as a matter of fact, if you were to look up stuff on the internet, I'm pretty sure that they use k as the constant of variation two. Okay, well, there you go. So, the variables x and y vary directly. Write a direct variation equation that has the given ordered pair as a solution, and then find each constant of variation. And notice that all we need is one point on this line in order to write its equation if it shows direct variation. And the reason why is because you're automatically given another one, which is the origin, zero, zero. But hey, you don't even have to think that hard. Let's just take this equation, y equals ax, and let's solve it for the constant of variation. I would just divide the x over, and a would be equal to y over x. So if I take my y coordinate, divide it by my x coordinate, I automatically get my constant of variation. So on this one, my a value is negative 9 over 3, which is negative 3. So my direct variation equation is y equals negative 3x. And it's done. Okay, on number two, my constant of variation is y coordinate 4 over negative 7. You can bring that negative out front if you wanted to. And write in the equation y equals negative 4 sevenths x. Okay, slightly more challenging. On number three, the y coordinate over the x coordinate, 1 over 3 fifths. 1 divided by 3 fifths, this is what's called a complex fraction, a fraction within a fraction. So let's turn this into a division problem. 1 divided by 3 fifths. When I divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. 
So this becomes 1 times 5 thirds, which is 5 thirds. So my equation is y equals 5 thirds x. And that's it. It's that simple. Okay. So since y equals ax can be rewritten as a equals y divided by x, like what we were doing before, a set of ordered pairs shows direct variation if the y coordinates divided by the x coordinates stays constant. It's the constant of variation. So for example, in the red table there, we have some table of values for y equals 2x. The constant of variation is 2. That shows direct variation. Now look at the actual table values. If I divide 2 by 1, I get 2. If I divide 4 by 2, I get 2. If I divide 6 by 3, I get 2. If I divide 8 by 4, I also get 2. No matter what, I'd always get 2. It shows direct variation. It is directly proportional. Okay, let's look at the next one. It's y equals 2x plus 1. Well, that doesn't show direct variation. If I look at the ordered pairs and I try to divide them y by x, I get 3 divided by 1, which is 3. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, and so on. I don't get the same number every single time. So if I have a table of values, and I want to see, like if I'm collecting data, and I want to see if one of them is directly proportional to the other one, all I have to do is divide y coordinates by x coordinates and see if I get approximately the same number each time, like this one. So on exercise two, you got Bruce there. How about you, Mike? What's your problem? Bruce, okay. So great white sharks have triangular teeth. The table below, let me show you that table, gives the length of the side of a tooth and the body length for each of six great white sharks. Tell whether the tooth length and body length show direct variation. If so, write an equation that relates these quantities. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video and divide these things out. The B, which is our Y coordinate, divided by the T, and see if you get roughly the same thing. Now remember, this is these are actual numbers, actual measurements, and so they may not be exactly on the money, but they should be pretty close if this shows direct variation. Let's go ahead and pause it and divide your numbers and let's check them. Okay, so here are the numbers you should have gotten after you divided. Now they're not exactly the same, but they are all approximately the same. They're all approximately 120. So we're gonna say that this has approximate direct variation with a constant of variation of 120. So if I'm gonna write this equation, the body length of a shark is equal to 120 times the length of its teeth. There you go. All right, so, uh, Direct variation, just strict linear direct variation, kind of boring. So let's, uh, let's amp it up a notch and say the variable y varies directly as the square of x. So now, instead, our equation will look like this. y equals a times x squared, okay? When y equals 18, our y equals 18 when x equals 6. Write an equation that relates y and x and what is the constant of variation? And then we have a follow-up question. We'll worry about that at the end. So let's just stick our numbers into the equation, uh, into this form right here. Y is equal to 18. X is equal to 6. Let's square that. So 18 equals A times 36. Divide both sides by 36. And of course, I get, I get a half my direct, or my constant of variation is a half. My equation then is y is equal to one half times x squared. Now, the follow-up question is find y when x is equal to 12. So y equals a half times 12 squared. A half times 144 is 72. Ta-da! Okay, so it doesn't have to be just direct variation, plain old direct variation. It could be uh, directly proportional or very directly to the square of x or anything else that you see in this table here. So 
Uh, the square root of x is y equals a x squared. If it varies directly to the square root of x, y equals a times square root of x. The cube of x, y equals a times x cubed. You get the picture, right? So on and so forth. So let me have you test out this with this question. The variable y varies directly as the square root of x such that y is equal to 18 when x equals 9. Write yourself an equation that relates x and y. What's the constant of variation, of course, and then find y when x equals 16. This one, I'm going to let you tackle all by yourself. Pause the video. So is this what you got? So we're going to use the equation of the form y equals a square root of x. You have to find your constant of variation by plugging in 9 for x, 18 for y. You get a constant of variation of 6. So write your equation as y equals 6 times the square root of x. And then finally, the last part of the question, plug 16 in for x. Take the square root of that, that's 4, times it by 6, you get 24. Okay, so that wraps up direct variation. I'll see you in the next video.